All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for taking the time to, uh, to come here for what I think is going to be a pretty incredible se session. Um, we're going to be talking about growing sustainable and affordable housing options across Connecticut. And we have Alyssa Norwood and uh, Lisa Noriega from Sustainable Connecticut, as well as Sean Gio from the Partnership for Strong Communities. Um, thank you for joining us for Tipping Point. Uh, this is the second of over 30 sessions this week. Um, if you're just registered for this one and you're interested in, uh, in some of the other sessions we have, uh, I encourage you to sign up for those. They're all completely free and um, we're going to be uh, continuing uh, signups for these, these sessions throughout the week. You'll get, a, you'll get a link at the end of the, uh, the, the session um, to, to the next session we're doing on, um, on uh, the um, community leadership in affordable housing options. So um, my name is Charlie Shaddix. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a communications manager at the Partnership for Strong Communities. I'm uh, thrilled to be uh, a part of this session. Um, throughout the week, Partnership Strong Communities is hosting over 30 sessions as part of our Tipping Point Conference, uh, featuring local, state, and national experts, leading conversations that explore challenges, share best practices, and coalesce us around critical next steps to address key affordable housing issues in our state. Um, if you're not already following us on Twitter, please feel free to do so. We're at PSC Housing. We also have a uh, uh, Facebook account, Partnership for Strong Communities. Uh, we'll be uh, tweeting about Tipping Point, and you can uh, join the conversation using hashtag Tipping Point 2020 on Twitter. Um, Again, this session is titled Growing Sustainable and Affordable Housing Options Across Connecticut. Um, before we turn it over to our presenters, we'd like to thank some of the sponsors that we have for this conference. Uh, first, we'd like to thank our leading sponsors, the Connecticut Finance, uh, Housing Finance Authority and the Melville Ch Charitable Trust. Their deep support has allowed this conference series to exist and we're very grateful for everything that they've uh, done to, to advance the conversation around affordable housing in Connecticut. In addition, we want to thank our uh, collaborating sponsor, the Connecticut Department of Housing, and to our supporting sponsors, Housing Enterprises Incorporated and Whittlesey. Uh, a couple of housekeeping notes uh, before we get started. The session is being recorded. We'll make all recordings available to conference attendees as soon as possible. Um, you know, we'll have a, a YouTube page with everything, and we'll uh, we'll send it, we'll send you all an email. Um, after that's done to, uh, to make sure you have all of the, uh, the recordings of the sessions. All participants of this meeting have entered muted. Please remain on mute until a presenter has asked you to unmute. If you have a technology issue, please select the chat icon in the Zoom control panel and send it in the chat to, uh, to myself um, at PSC Zoom Meetings 2. We will do our best to assist you with any technical issues that you have. Uh, your presenters will let you know that they, uh, how they would like content questions to be submitted, and a few minutes before the end of the session, we will launch a poll that asks for your feedback on the session. Please take a minute to share and help us improve future webinars and conference office, uh, offerings. Lastly, the Partnership for Strong Communities is working to better understand the needs of our communities and affordable housing partners. We want to learn from you. Towards the end of the session, we'll be sharing a link to a survey in the chat. Please take a few minutes after the session to share your feedback and uh, help shape the issues the, uh, that we work on and the ways we work. I will now turn it over to our presenters to get us started. Great. Um, thank you so much, Charlie, for that introduction. Um, my name is Alyssa Norwood, and I'm program manager with Sustainable Connecticut. And I'll also turn it over to my colleagues to introduce themselves. Lisa, do you want to go next? Sure. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa Noriega, and I'm an intern with Sustainable CT. Um, I primarily work on action development, and I help with certification, and I'm very happy to be here talking with you all today. Good morning. I'm Sean Gio. I'm Policy Director at Partnership for Strong Communities, and I'm excited to be presenting alongside my friends with Sustainable CT. That's great. 
So, you know, you'll notice we're in a meeting format and not in a webinar format because it felt really important that this was a conversation as much as it is a presentation. So I will ask everybody, um, you know, if you have the capacity to turn off your cameras just for a moment, we're going to go into share mode. You'll see slides soon. Um, but if we were all in a room together, we'd get to see each other's faces. I'm not sure you have the capacity to do that, but if you do, um, please do. And if not, take a moment to just scroll through the pages and take a look at your colleagues and the incredible breadth of expertise we have here um, for some conversation. So I'm looking forward to some interaction. Um, just see who's here, who's in the room, and we're so glad that you're all here. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen. Um, and I'm going to ask my co-presenters, Sean and Lisa, I'm in the land of everything being um, taken up in my screen. So we're, uh, we're, we're going to do a round robin. We're going to trade back and forth. So if I'm presenting on a slide and you're supposed to, please speak up and, um, and take your part. So um, our agenda is laid out before us today. We're going to talk a little bit about what sustainable CT is. I'd love folks as we're going through this agenda in the chat. Um, to indicate what your involvement is with Sustainable CT. Are you new to understanding what the program is? Are you part of a registered community? Are you certified? So um, just in a couple of words, um, go ahead and click the chat so that we all have a sense of um, where everyone is and you can all learn from each other. Sean, um, folks already know for sure, you've heard from Charlie is gonna quickly touch on the Partnership for Strong Communities, but also discuss how their organization is uniquely situated to work with us to form what's been a really inspired and exciting partnership. Um, we're then gonna talk about the links between housing and sustainability, which might be self-evident, to all of you, many folks on the call are very well of the intersection, but it's not always immediately transparent what the linkages are between housing and environmental sustainability. We're then going to talk about Sustainable CT's action roadmap and how municipalities have been using it to engage in creating more sustainable and affordable housing at the local level and across the state. Um, and then finally, We'll talk about um, the many different partners that have resulted in the creation of new housing actions and we'll dig more into those. Um, so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, and I urge you all again to take a look in the chat um, and see what, what's happening there. Um, and we'll keep moving forward. So what is Sustainable CT at its core? It's a voluntary certification program for municipalities to pursue excellence in sustainability. And for those who are familiar with our program probably know that the definition of sustainability is really broadly conceived. So it includes environmental sustainability, but it also looks at the economy and equity as a critical pillar of our program. Um, the CCM, Connecticut Conference of Municipalities Task Force on Sustainability convened um, about three, four years ago now to put together this vision of a roadmap. And one of the most critical components of it is that it honored municipal choice in the realm of housing. We all know how important that is. What works in one community doesn't necessarily work in another. Um, but what is important is that sustainable CET encompasses a, a broad enough menu of sustainability actions that there's something for everyone. Um, and of course, the goal in all of this, having this flexible program of recognition that's well supported with resources, is to create places as in the state that are more livable um, and, of course, more thriving. So we want to take a moment, as we always do, to acknowledge um, our partners as well as our funders. So Sustainable CT has a growing number of funders, um, but we want to acknowledge our three founding funders, which are the Smart Seed Fund, the Common Sense Fund, and the Emily Hall Tremaine Foundation. Um, I myself, as program manager, work at Eastern Connecticut State University, as do several others of our staff, and it's Eastern's Institute for Sustainable Energy that, by contract with Sustainable CT, manages, oversees the program, and was instrumental in creating the nonprofit, of which Sean, um, at Partnership, is a member of its board. And then, of course, the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities that continues to be a key partner in making sure that the program maintains the spirit in which it was created and that's having it be by towns and for towns. 
So with respect to municipal participation, this exceeds even Stav's wildest notions of success. So we launched at the Connecticut Conference of Municipalities annual meeting in November 2017. So we're just about coming up on our third birthday. And um, this map is always changing. And it's in fact already a couple days out of date. And we now have 113 registered municipalities and welcome Suffield as our newer registered town. Um, so broad statewide participation, incredible momentum, and now 61 of those towns registered for sustainable CT um, and certified as well, either at the bronze or the silver level, which are the two levels um, of certification currently offered in sustainable CT. So what is the partnership for strong communities role in all of this? Sean, I'm gonna turn it over to you and we're so grateful for your partnership. Thanks, Alyssa, uh, and thank you. I'm watching as uh, participants continue to come in and it's great to see so much interest in, in this session. Um, so the Partnership for Strong Communities, I won't spend much time explaining who we are. We're the hosts of Tipping Point. Um, uh, we're, uh, I'm particularly focused as policy director on uh, expanding housing opportunities across Connecticut. Um, and a partnership became engaged with sustainable CT in the uh, very early on uh, my, with my predecessor, uh, David Fink, um, who I'm sure many of you know, really uh, working uh, in that original um, steering committee uh, that, that uh, scoped out what sustainable CT would focus on. And uh, sustainable CT decided to include housing as fundamental to sustainability, uh, which uh, uh, I think is really worth noting because it's my understanding that these efforts, these sustainability efforts sort of uh, across the country, it's very rare, if not unheard of, um, for uh, housing to have such a prominent um, position in while well, when we're thinking about sustainability. Um, and our engagement with uh, Sustainable CT, my personal engagement with Sustainable CT is, uh, my commitment to it is such that, um, uh, as Lisa mentioned, I serve on the, on the board of Sustainable CT now, and I also serve on the board of my local certification uh, committee in my, in my home, hometown of Cheshire. Um, the, the sustainable CT really has done more, I think, than most anything at driving the connection between sustainability and affordable, sustainable housing options in the state. So I'm really excited that we continue our engagement. I'll hand it back to you, Alyssa. Thanks, Sean. Um, I'll head to the next slide. And before we head into the connections between housing and sustainability, again, you know, we're all so constrained in this COVID world and this Zoom environment, um, but I really want to have the feel that we're hopefully having some engagement. So folks who um, typed in the chat, thank you. If any of you were willing, who either wrote in the chat already or haven't yet, to unmute yourselves and uh, put your camera on. We'd love to hear about your intersections, either with sustainable CT generally, or um, how you've engaged in promoting more affordable housing either on your own or through sustainable CT. So we're gonna sprinkle this with a little dialogue. Um, we'd love to hear from you. You could just go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, you, get, you get to be the first, right? Only one person can be first, so don't miss your chance. I don't mind being the guinea pig. Um, I don't know I'm if you sorry, can, go ahead. I don't know if you can hear me, Alyssa. This is Patrick McKenna. I work with Community Solutions. Uh, we work in the north end of Hartford. Just finished the refurbishment of uh, an old factory building. And kind of our next step in the neighborhood is trying to address some of the substandard housing conditions around the factory to make it a sustainable and, and healthy community. Um, I'm also involved with a sustainable CT committee a little bit in Middletown in my hometown. So looking forward to learning more, thanks. That's great. Patrick, thank you for speaking up. Hi, this is Jill, can you hear me? Hi Jill, yes we can. How are you? 
I wasn't Good. preparing to be on the call this morning on visual, but I wanted to introduce myself. I'm the executive director of Litchfield Housing Trust. Currently, we're working on a eight uh, single family home development in Litchfield, and we're very excited to be part of this uh, conference this week. And uh, I've already learned a lot this morning, and um, I'll be joining Litchfield in their um, sustainable CT as it relates to affordable housing in Litchfield. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear from one more person. Hi, my name is Kirsten Morrow. I live in Simsbury. Um, I'm part of a group called Holding the Door Open. We started in June and we talk about racism, diversity and inclusion. And we recently formed a subcommittee called Simsbury Inclusive Neighborhood Development Coalition. Uh, we're part of a number of groups within town supported by the government as well as grassroots organizations. So we're just starting to have these discussions with our, clan, our planning commission, excuse me. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy to be here. I'm a complete newbie. So I, I come from Toronto originally where I lived in a multi socioeconomic neighborhood development that was uh, the first of its kind in, in Canada, in Toronto, it's been around for 40 years. And so we're, we're looking to build our model off of that one, which is the St. Lawrence market area in Toronto. So happy to be here folks. That's wonderful. Thank you all and uh, continue to speak up. We want this to be lively and to have peer learning um, as, much, as much as we're presenting to you. So Lisa, I'll turn it over to you to talk about the intersections between housing and sustainability. Great, thank you, Alyssa. So the connection between housing and sustainability can often be unclear, especially when we think about sustainability solely in the terms of climate and the environment. Um, but with Sustainable CT's very broad conception of sustainability, we're able to see that housing is actually quite central to the discussion around sustainable development. Because if you think about it, one of the most important parts of what makes a thriving community is ensuring that everyone has the place to call home within that community. So that's really first and foremost. But beyond that, we can make connections between housing and economic well-being, housing and equity, obviously housing and environment, and housing and health, and so on. And then next slide. Great. Is this me, Lisa, or is this you? This is me. <laughs> so I'd like to shape the discussion around housing and sustainability connectivity in the context of co-benefits and these benefit icons here. So at Sustainable CT, we craft our actions in a way that will produce co-benefits for communities. Housing in particular achieves many of the co-benefits pictured here. And if you go to any action on our website, each one will have several of these, which we call benefit icons. For example, in order to have a thriving local economy, residents must have a stable individual life in order to be civically and economically engaged. And environmentally, thoughtful housing development and zoning especially can reduce sprawl, which is one, truly one of the worst things for the environment because many communities um, aren't just really rural or really dense. A lot of towns just put large amounts of pavement and impervious surfaces over an area where people are vastly far apart, which has both direct impacts on the land and the environment and indirect impacts through increased transportation and emissions. Um, housing can also result in greenhouse gas reductions if there's appropriate development at the community scale, which can reduce the amount of driving necessary if housing is zoned in such a way that approximates it to the community and public transportation. There's also the importance of green housing development, which reduces emissions through like energy efficiency and often incorporating renewable energy. Um, then there's also the piece around the health impacts of housing and how poor indoor air quality can lead to asthma and cancers. And then most importantly, there's the connection between housing and equity, which creates this conversation around does, does everybody have the choice as to where they are situated in the community because Every resident should have the right to choose where they live and everyone has the right to adequate and fair housing in communities of opportunity. And then next slide. Yeah, so like I said before, sustainable CT very broadly defines sustainability, which is exemplified through each of these nine, soon to be 12 categories since we're expanding. And as you can see, our eighth category here is housing, which connects to each of the other categories as well. 
And here are the three actions in our program that we currently have around housing. But as you'll see in just a minute, we're expanding upon these actions and adding one for 2021 that centers around zoning and housing policy. We'll go to the next slide. Okay, so the creation of New Haven's Affordable Housing Task Force is an excellent example of the interconnectedness of housing, sustainability, and equity. So in 2019, New Haven achieved silver certification with Sustainable CT, and a big part of their success was this Affordable Housing Task Force they created in response to the displacement of several people from low-income housing. So through the creation of this task force, the community is engaged in meetings and a robust set of action areas and policy changes are set to be made to increase the number of safe and sanitary units and other low-income housing options. So now we wanna just pause for a minute to just ask um, anybody if there are any other examples of affordable housing or housing sustainability efforts in the works in any of your communities. Um, and also just think about what your community is doing proactively to create affordable housing options and how are you engaging the community in that process. Does anybody have anything they wanna share? Um, I, not at the risk of uh, calling on someone, I noticed Jocelyn Ayer is, uh, I, I think I saw on the list. I don't know if Jocelyn, if you just want to mention at all uh, briefly um, your efforts in the Northwest corner, but specifically in Salisbury. I know people have lots of divided attention. So, you know, Jocelyn, at any point, if you want to hop in, we welcome you. Also, if anybody from New Haven is on that wants to, to speak more to this effort that we're highlighting, folks probably know to put this in a broader container. Um, a few years ago, legislation passed in the state that requires all municipalities going forward once every five years to create an affordable housing plan. I know there are other sessions that will touch on the work of other partners. All I wanna say on that point is that Sustainable CT has closely aligned itself with the work of those partners so that a town that's seeking points in our program um, will be doing a consistent set of steps and um, moving ahead with uniform efforts that'll both get them points. And of course the reason to get the points is to do the right thing in our communities. Um, this is how good afternoon. This oh. is Karen. Oh, Karen. Hi, this is Karen Dubois Walton on. I'm from Elm City Communities, which is a housing authority in New Haven, and I served on the Affordable Housing Task Force in New Haven. Um, and you know, a big part of the focus of the task force was to define steps that the city needed to take with uh, within itself, but also um, the call on the uh, region, because as we know the lack of development of affordable housing, housing in the broader region has a significant impact on the lack of affordability and the demand on services in, in New Haven. Um, and so that has led to ongoing um, collaboration with the South Central um, Regional Council of Governments, the COG, which is uh, called out on this, on this slide. And on a monthly basis, the chief electeds or their designee have been meeting um, on the, uh, uh, subsequent affordable housing task force of the region to really think together about how we're going to approach this, not just from an individual municipality or town level, but from a, a more regional approach. Um, so I wanted to mention that as well. So glad you spoke up. Thank you. Uh, my name is Helene Flexer. I'm the senior program coordinator at the Northeastern Connecticut Council of Governments, and I am actually working on the regional housing plan. Our 16 towns in Northeastern Connecticut um, agreed to have us write an individual plan for all of the towns, as some of the challenges for housing and affordable housing are similar in our region. So we're actually working on that, and um, we're working on the draft right now. So I just wanted to say that we are working collaboratively with our 16 member towns. That's wonderful, Hi, thank um, you. I, I can offer something up. I'm Alicia Dolce and I am a relatively new resident of the town of Guilford, Connecticut. And I only say that because I've been here a little over a year and a half. And 
Um, and I, I moved from a neighboring town of Madison. But uh, in that short burst of time, I was made aware um, and delighted to hear that Guilford had been uh, certified, I believe, as silver. And I don't know if the, um, and, and sort of simultaneously with that, I learned about a, pro a pending project to create affordable housing um, in my neighborhood, literally almost across the street. I live very close to the train station. So there was um, a desire, I think there was a task force in town to create uh, this um, affordable housing community. It would be close to transit and it would again, you know, help to uh, advance the town's mission to create more affordable housing. Um, and I have to say there was tremendous um, uh, show of support through town meetings because it had to do with some town land had to be conveyed to a nonprofit developer. The town came out in very, very large numbers to uh, vote positively to make this land transfer. And then COVID hit. And it just seemed as though the momentum came to a pause. And in fact, I recently reached out to one of the architects on the project and I said, you know, what's the status of this incredibly exciting project? She just said, it's just, we've just kind of hit, a, it's just on pause right now. So I don't know if this project is being done to potentially um, related to sustainable Connecticut and, and ongoing certification, but, um, as a new resident of the town, um, I'm just um, was so happy to hear about it. And um, in particular, they were going for some very, very high performance metrics, uh, specifically passive house, which brings in those other elements of energy, afford, you know, energy efficiency, um, healthy, creating an incredibly healthy indoor um, air, uh, indoor air quality for residents and just, just hitting so many of those other boxes that I think were shown earlier on all the, you know, all the different intersections that are possible with affordable uh, housing. So that's my update and we'll see what happens. Thank you all so much. Um, we'll, we'll pause there. I'm hoping for more conversation. Mark Abraham, I think I saw your name here. You can confirm, I believe Guilford on the most recent community well-being survey won, won the informal award for highest civic engagement in the state based on responses. So you, you embody that. And so grateful to all of the other participants who are talking about the amazing work that's happening, notwithstanding really significant challenges on a good day, um, creating more affordable housing stock in the right places and in the right way in the state is hard. Obviously, the current climate makes it that much harder, but that much more urgent. So i um, excited to hear um, about the work that's happening. And we'll continue that conversation in, in the time that we have. So um, sustainable CT action development. So we've talked about how housing is nested in our program. Um, for folks who are familiar, you already know this, but there's something, maybe it's our instantaneous culture, but whatever it is, our, our obsession with gaming as a people, but there's something about towns getting points that's just really motivating. And sustainable CT has become this space of real pursuit of excellence um, and recognition resulting in some incredible positives in the community and the coupling of policy with implementation and practice. So we'll delve into this a little bit more, but part of the reason that our, our partnership with the Partnership for Strong Communities has been so synergistic is they have a wealth of resources, a wealth of tools, incredible expertise to try to help towns at the local and the regional level advance these goals. It's what they've been doing successfully statewide in the state for so many years along with many other partners, but Sustainable CT has really helped catalyze implementation and people who weren't previously reading their housing data profiles, aware of the needs in their communities. They're, they're new residents and new municipal staff that are engaging, knocking at the door and wanna do the right thing. Um, so we're leveraging that momentum as we continue to use our existing framework and also expand. Um, so we're going to talk next about sustainable CT action development broadly, and then more specifically to housing. So um, anyone who wants to, I know people multitask while they're on these things, you can go onto the sustainable CT website. And if you click at the top, there's a tab that says actions and certification, and, and it'll take you to our actions page where you'll see a roadmap of dozens of different steps municipalities can take to make their communities more sustainable. So where do all of these ideas come from at our 
our inception, we had a really comprehensive process where over 200 stakeholders with representatives either locally or regionally from the state's um, towns, all 169 of them, collectively informed and participated in the creation of those actions. They're living documents. We put them out into the world. We learn, we grow. There are new and emerging best practices or there are things we missed the first time around. Um, so we're excited to always be engaged in the process of refinement and growth growth. And where do these ideas come from now after that initial workup? Um, we get input from towns, from our reviewers. We have um, approximately 50 experts who volunteer their time statewide to actually review the submissions um, that towns put through the certification process and provide really nuanced and thoughtful feedback to municipalities so they could grow. We have technical assistance partners like the Partnership for Strong Communities that help towns um, with affordable housing strategies, our staff, our fellows, and so on. So we have all these different sources we put together, we synthesize, and then we move through this framework of action development. Um, and at its core, you can read all of the words here, but again, I keep coming back to this notion of by towns for towns. This is a voluntary program, towns built it, towns implement it, um, and you can see those last few steps working with towns to test ideas and piloting and focusing. That's part of the, the point of our convening today. Um, we want to hear from you in an ongoing way beyond today about how we take this tremendously popular framework that towns are looking to now to guide sustainability and planning in the state and how we make sure that we're constantly right-sizing it um, and that it's inclusive and considering a broad range of municipalities. You know, we always, I'm not picking on any towns, but in our working groups, we'd always ask, you know, does this work for Goshen and does this work for Bridgeport? Are there pathways for both of those communities um, in the program? And then finally, um, in terms of evaluating importance and relevance, you know, a lot of sustainability programs can be very urban centric. Um, that's true of the development of affordable housing, too. There are some towns, it's for historic reasons, land use planning, where, where funds are allocated and resourced more readily um, at different levels of government as well as grants. We want to make sure that we level the playing field and that there's greater accessibility for smaller communities in the state so that um, not only they have the ability to create affordable housing, but that residents in need of it can access it um, in any area, right? We talk about ensuring that folks have access to housing in high opportunity areas. That's a value, recognizing our changing world and so on. Um, so that's the container that we sit in. And now um, we'll talk about the housing roadmap and all of the different players and partners that have been involved. So Sean, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Alyssa. Um, so I'll just explain a little bit about um, our uh, what I think the partnership helps to bring to sustainable CT is we uh, as as uh, Alyssa was saying uh, developing these housing actions. There's a lot uh, partnership through our Home Connected campaign and otherwise really does convene and and connect with just a wide host of, of, of sta experts and stakeholders in this space. And this slide just lays out some of the most prominent ones of, of that we work with. And, um, and, and really what I see our role, hopefully in this has been for, for a sustainable CT is to help bring some of these experts to the, the um, action development process for sustainable CT, um, and uh, you, some of you uh, may, some of you representatives from these folks may be on this call right now. Um, but uh, you'll hear from many of these folks at different points during the session, uh, during the conference. So, um, including Desegregate Connecticut, uh, Regional Plan Associations in, involved in multiple sessions. Uh, Connecticut Data Collaborative, Connecticut Fair Housing Center, also in multiple sessions. So I, I encourage you all to look at, uh, closely at the um, agenda uh, to try to um, connect with uh, these great experts. But what I want to re leave you with is, again, um, you know, Alyssa talked about uh, uh, this panel of experts that re for every uh, action area that review the the, the um, certification applications. They take the same level of rigor to developing 
um, the actions uh, and by bringing together some uh, some of the best uh, thinkers and per, uh, practitioners in the state in each of their areas. And this this is just a sample of them from the housing area. Is there uh, anything else you uh, wanted me to cover, Alyssa? I'm sorry if I missed anything. No, you know, just again, from the space of positivity, there's a lot for us to not be positive, I know, but um, the extent of collaboration so often um, in a statewide sphere, there'll be a lot of great people doing great work, all marching in the same direction, but not necessarily communicating. And the extent of coordination between these different entities. So, you know, Regional Plan Association, I don't know if Melissa, I didn't scan through the names this here, Melissa Kathleen Macy from Regional Plan Association, many folks know, has been working with the Department of Housing to create and soon release, if it hasn't been already, um, what's going to be the affordable um, housing process guide and toolkit to help towns as we mentioned previously with implementing affordable housing plans. Um, everything in that plan has been informed by all these other organizations and we've been working meticulously sharing thoughts back and forth for the past several months to make sure the pathway in that toolkit is aligned with the pathway in sustainable CT, is aligned with the statewide agenda that Desegregate Connecticut is putting forth. So um, there's this wonderful moment in the state where I feel like not only are we all marching in the same direction, but um, we're doing it in a coordinated and thoughtful fashion so that there's a lot of mutual reinforcement. So I hope that um, some of the strategies you hear today will be echoed elsewhere. And it's a reflection of the stellar communication that's happened um, that Sean just outlined. So the, the heart of it, you know, I hope why you're all here is what is in the sustainable CT housing action roadmap. So we're gonna review both what's currently there as well as what's going to be there um, by January 1st, 2021, um, released in next year's sustainable CT program. As I mentioned, we're, um, we embody this idea of co-creation. So we very much want you to unmute yourselves, ask questions and remain engaged afterwards because we want these to reflect the best of what we can offer. Um, so if anybody has thoughts, um, please let us know. So we'll keep this at a high level, but if there are questions, we can drill down. So sustainable CT, you saw previously, Lisa had the slide up. We have these nine, soon to be 12, categories of development and they define sustainability really broadly. Um, we know that there are some towns that are going to tend more toward one area than another. A town that's pretty rural would probably excel in the land and natural resources category. A town that's more urban would probably have a lot to say about public transit and sustainable transportation. So we want to celebrate and reward all those achievements, but we also want towns to embody this idea of a broad definition of sustainability. So every town in Connecticut has to do something, at least one something, they choose what from each of our action categories, which translates into every town that pursues certification has to do something to advance affordable housing. And we all know that there's a, a range of readiness in the state from some communities that have been really thoughtful and proactive to some that are really just in the initial stages and conversations and even willingness to acknowledge the need for affordable housing. So our program creates what we call these ladders of opportunity. There's an entry point for every town in the state to start thinking about this topic. And because it's required for certification, we've seen some really remarkable things. So the place that we tell people to start is at an action that's currently called Design and Implement a Housing Needs Assessment. It has several components to it. A town can do one, some, or all. It's up to them. But they start with looking at data. Um, that's where the conversation always begins. So folks probably know, and Sean will um, explain in, in great detail in a future session during Tipping Point, but partnership um, through a partnership with the Connecticut Data Collaborative has created um, online interactive housing data profiles They've been engaged in the creation of these profiles for a number of years. They're an invaluable asset to the town. Um, you could go ahead, probably quickly find them via Google, but you can look at any town in Connecticut, a number of indicators are available. You can benchmark um, compared to both state and regional level data. So that's where we send towns first. Go, take a look at your housing data profile, and then we give them a worksheet. And it's almost like those reading comprehension exercises you got in third grade and we asked them a series of thoughtful questions. 
What are the demographics of your community now? What do they look like in the future? Is your community getting older? As your population ages, will it stay there? Do you have workforce housing? If you don't, do you have public transportation such that there are connections and the people that you need that keep your community running can work there? How diverse are you compared to the rest of the state? If you're not why not? Um, so it's this it's this moment of self-reflection and towns are really forced to take a look at the data and understand where they are um, in an open-ended, non-leading way. We obviously have an agenda, but it's it's a moment of kind of looking at things as they are and then to present the findings at a public meeting. So that's the first step. Um, 2018 was the first year we, we put this out into the community. We had some skepticism from partners that towns would actually do this. Um, if you Google, you'll find newspaper articles about Greenwich having a series of really productive town meetings um, about affordable housing and where they were in the state. So if Greenwich can do it, anyone can. Um, and then for towns that have moved beyond that step, um, there's a call to do a, a detailed housing needs assessment. So, you know, a lot of great work can happen at the staff level um, in a town, if a town is lucky enough to have staff um, to do this work, but um, critical to the sustainable CT model generally is this idea of having a robust process of community engagement. So that's integral to the action and making sure that the housing needs assessment is heavily informed by community conversations and community needs. And then sharing that across municipal departments, trying to take municipalities beyond beyond this idea of siloed communication. Um, so that's, that's the first action, again, with all of these various pieces. Then the next one um, that was, that's in our program is about the creation of affordable housing. But before we get there, because these housing data profiles are so integral, I'll pause again and Sean let you comment more on, um, on their value to communities and, and their use in sustainable CT. Sure, I'll be uh, very brief. Um, Charlie posted a link to the profiles for those of you that have not seen the latest profiles. They were released uh, late in October. Um, we've moved, thanks to the um, the great work of the Connecticut Data Collaborative and funding from Fairfield County uh, Community Foundation and Liberty Bank Foundation, we've moved to an online platform which allows uh, some comparison between towns, towns and counties and the state. Uh, so I hope uh, they're even uh, more useful than they have been in the past. Um, I, I just wanted to, so please check those out uh, and there, let us know at the partnership about uh, other things you'd like to see in them uh, for future iterations. My hope is that we continue to iterate these to make these more uh, useful at the local level. Um, so, uh, and, and as the last thing I'll say is Alyssa mentioned that there will be a session that includes more in depth, look at the profiles and the different uh, uses and uh, features of them. That'll be on um, Wednesday morning. Uh, it's a session that also feature interactive um, data dashboards that the Connecticut Housing Finance Authority has. Uh, so that's Wednesday morning at 1030. Thanks, Alyssa. Yeah, thank you, Sean. Um, so the next piece, I talked about these ladders of opportunity, and I guess this is a really big jump from one to the other, so I apologize for the order, but so a town understand it's how it engages with the data, it understands its housing needs, and then of course we want to reward points for the actual creation of affordable housing. So there are two pathways to earn points, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, so you know, a town is asked to identify the courage percentage of affordable housing and it's a community. This is not some independent process. It's the same threshold that the Department of Housing uses to create the affordable housing appeals list every year. So whatever percentage it is that they would submit to the Department of Housing is what they submit to our program. The statewide goal, everyone probably knows, is 10% um, in every community so as to, to meet the threshold on the affordable housing appeals list. So if a municipality has more than 10% of its housing stock considered affordable, per that definition, it earns points in our program. And I saw a note in the chat around how, um, you know, some urban centers will talk about how they don't 
necessarily need more affordable housing. We could have a very interesting conversation about that, but you know, know that Sustainable CT has made a programmatic decision that any affordable housing is good. Um, affordable housing in um, areas of opportunity that's developed in accordance with a certain set of principles um, that many of you are probably familiar with is better, um, but you know, in incrementalism. So any town that's at 10% gets points. Alternatively, we also wanted to provide a pathway for towns that are moving in the right direction and we want to celebrate increases over time. Um, so let's say a municipality is currently at 2% and within the next few years, they report themselves as being at two and a quarter percent. So um, a town can pick any baseline year within the past five years compared to the present day and for every quarter of a percentage point increase, or 50 units of affordable housing, right? Because going back to, we have to make things work for Goshen and Bridgeport for smaller communities. Um, a quarter of a percentage point increase is a big deal. Um, for larger communities, it might make more sense to count units. But in any event, if we see increases over time, that's another pathway to earn points. Um, and as we as we moved along, this is where we began um, with sustainable CT, just dipping our toe into seeing how towns did with this. The response has been overwhelmingly positive. And the next step, of course, was to say, well, what are zoning strategies? How do we create the conditions in which to create affordable housing? Um, so Lisa and Sean are going to talk about our emerging action. Um, that provides a menu of possibilities. Of course, none of them are right for every community and there's much more detail in our action write-up, um, but I'll leave it to the two of you to walk everyone through these. Thanks. Yeah, so like Alyssa said, we've recognized through engagement with towns and thought partners that different communities across the state have very different housing needs and goals and limitations, especially when it comes to policy and zoning. Um, so as Sean and Alyssa mentioned earlier, we've been working closely with stakeholders over the summer to determine a menu of best practices for sustainable housing policy that towns can choose from based on what's most feasible um, and adheres to their specific needs. So here are just some of the options that we've come up with through continuous engagement and feedback sessions, but our goal really is to learn from this initial launch and the great thing about sustainable CT is that none of these actions are mandatory. So we really do want to honor municipal choice through this action. And we also crafted this action to provide that sort of missing middle step between our other two housing actions, right? So we have the housing needs assessment, and then we jump right to having an action on implementing affordable housing. So this policy piece we feel is really vital in bridging those two. And so Sean, would you wanna expand a bit on any of these and maybe talk a little bit more about incentive housing zones in particular? Sure, so incentive housing zones, for those of you that don't know, uh, is a st a state law has been around a little longer than a decade, um, sometimes called the Home Connecticut Program because Home Connecticut at the time was instrumental in uh, helping to advocate for its passage. And what it, it's just one of the, uh, of a, of really of a set of potential tools. And it, what it does is town uh, municipality can approve this zone called an incentive housing zone that allows for a certain uh, modest increase in housing density and uh, that permits the town to have access to some incentive payments from the state uh, both for the making the zoning change and then later if if building permits are actually uh, local, if there's actually development in that zone uh, for those units, uh, that housing development that's uh, um, uh, more dense. And um, so that's this program that still exists. Uh, those those uh, incentive bonus, incentive payments still exist. Uh, there's a number of incentive housing zones across the state. And but again, it's one tool uh, that um, has worked for some towns. And But when we look at some of these other um, examples on this page, you can see a lot of these uh, you are, are things that we've seen reflected in the desegregate Connecticut agenda, but they're uh, the, the things that the Connecticut chapter of the American Planning Association um, 
believes are, are uh, valuable and, and, and um, important for the state. And some of them are gonna be easier to do in your community than others, whether it's, um, you may already allow accessory dwelling units may, uh, to in a certain degree, but could, could you perhaps look, are they really allowing for an expanded options for people in your town? Perhaps your ordinance needs to be um, amended to, encur to encourage that. Um, are there ways to make it easier through process improvements to, to allow some level of multifamily housing development in your town? Our bonus densities uh, bonuses are another tool that can work in, in communities that have uh, particularly communities where there's quite a demand for development, developers want to develop or seeking to develop. Can you provide a density bonus uh, that says you can develop a little more densely if you set aside a certain percentage of your units uh, uh, of that development as affordable? These are, it's really a menu of choices that I think, uh, and that's really, to, to me, fits in with this philosophy of sustainable CT. This is all locally driven, but there's a lot of best practices and a menu of choices for towns to, to explore. That's great, thank you both. Um, so th this last one, I'm gonna turn it back over to Lisa. Again, I talked about how we're always a work in progress. We're always growing, seeking to expand our menu. So um, for, we hope 2022 or maybe beyond, um, there'll be an action that focuses on encouraging sustainable housing developments. So Lisa, do you wanna tell us a little yes. more about that? Sure, yeah. So an action that's in the works, but not quite ready for 2021, as Alyssa mentioned, um, addresses the need for sustainable features and design principles to be embedded in housing development, particularly multifamily. The action will include a sustainable housing development checklist for municipalities to adapt to fit the specific needs and interests of their communities so they can present that checklist to housing developers to determine which sustainable design principles could be built in. But not only is this action focused around the environmental implications of housing, but also the health implications, as I mentioned, indoor air quality, um, as well as equity and land use implications of where the housing is being built in the context of the community. So I think that's it. We'll advance the slide. Great. So, you know, putting all of this together, I think that we're in a space of a lot of excitement and optimism. And for those um, that have been doing this work in the state for decades, I think that we'll all agree there's a really unique confluence of social, economic, and other factors um, that are really giving increased attention and momentum around this topic. And not to sugarcoat it, developing affordable housing, to be sure, continues to be difficult in some spaces in the state and most likely the need um, for a long time will continue to outstrip the supply. Um, but there's this incredible synergy across a number of different organizations and coalescing around this framework. We're so grateful and humbled by the success of Sustainable CT that we think that um, there, there's really this catalyzing moment for change and transformation. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the share because with that, we're really interested. We have just a few minutes in hearing from all of you either um, for questions or alternatively just for some conversation. Um, and the question I'd like to tee up for conversation in, in what in your communities right now are you celebrating in terms of successes with respect to affordable and sustainable housing development? And what do you perceive as continued challenges? Um, so again, you know, even if you're not speaking, I think it would be great if we could all see each other. So at this moment, as many of you as possible, if you can un unmute yourselves and also um, turn your cameras on, we wanna have a little bit more of a, a dialogue at this moment and it's always nice to see faces. So thank you all so very much. Um, I see the first thing in the chat is when will the affordable housing guide and toolkit be released? I'd be interested in sharing that with my town. Um, I have a guess, but Sean, I'm looking at you or Melissa or others who are maybe more in the know. Is there a date yet for that or not yet? I don't know if, uh, if anyone from RPA is on the call, but uh, I, it's, I'm not aware of a specific date. I know it's it's imminent uh, and del being delivered to the Department of Housing, so um, it would be in the near future. 
Yeah, you know, I would say by if, if it's safe to say, please don't hold me to it. But by the end of the calendar year, I know is certainly a goal. Um, I think so. so. That's exciting. Great. What else? What's happening in your towns and communities? We want to know, and so does everybody else who's on the call. Um, this is Karen again. I'll, I'll just offer uh, something I also put in the chat. I, um, the more that efforts can be aligned in ways that incentivize the development of housing for the really deeply affordable um, housing need, I think that would be very beneficial. Too often, um, particularly suburban towns uh, that are exploring affordable housing, shy away from providing what's needed for the most deeply affordable and play into the sort of community prejudices and biases about um, families who are our, our lowest income families. And so the more um, that as you're aligning and, and uh, you know, as, assigning points for, for things, um, things that really incentivize um, reaching our lowest income families, I think is very, is very important. Um, so I'd encourage you on that front too. It's, it's a, it's a challenge in, in the, in the um, city developments that are coming along as well. Um, folks relying only on, on tax credit um, often serve a higher income, uh, low income um, population, but the, the need for affordable is much deeper than that. How true. Thank you. What else? I won't make you talk. We can go if people aren't feeling it, but we have a lot of great and thoughtful people all gathered together, so I don't want to miss the moment if there are things to be shared. Yes, David. Yeah, this is David Berto. I just want to go and echo what Karen said. We help groups in a lot of the small towns and there is a huge need for the lower income opportunities in the small towns for the people that live there and for diversity and housing opportunities. One of the other challenges then is for small towns, you can't get low income housing tax credits, so you need other funding. And if you serve the lower income folks, you have less operating income, so you need more funding. So the funders have to understand that as well. That's it. Thank you. If there is one, why don't we take one more comment or question? So if nobody's taking it, I'll actually offer up the last one. Um, so one of the, the pleasures of working at Sustainable CT is reading what towns are doing. Um, so Sustainable um, Connecticut has towns that are all different stages in the process and Falls Village is one of our registered communities um, that's established an incentive housing zone. They've established um, a fund for towns to, um, for, for folks to contribute to as they, um, is they get money from a variety of different sources and they're taking a lot of positive steps toward the creation of affordable housing. So, um, you know, Falls Village off in the Northwest corner, if they can do it, we all can. So I just wanted to thank you all so much. You probably also saw that um, there's a session feedback poll up. So hopefully, um, you know, you could go ahead and share and the conference organizers can use the information to learn and grow and keep creating um, great content for all of you. And the last thing I'll do is direct you all to the chat where you'll see that um, Charlie has posted the next tipping point session. So you got three minutes, you can go to the bathroom, grab some lunch, come back and, uh, and learn more about housing. So thank you all for your time and generosity and um, have a wonderful day. Be well. Bye-bye.